Shangri-La, a fabled utopia of mystical mountain valleys and a very real paradise on Earth. Join Travelog on a whirlwind adventure as we search for this lost land. Along the way, we'll encounter breathtaking scenery, fascinating cultures, and treacherous mountain paths. From the hardships we endure to the euphoria we enjoy, Travelog takes you to some of the most spectacular parts of China. Join us on our fantastic five-part adventure, Discovering Shangri-La. Hello and welcome to Travelog. I'm Tirana. Right now, we're here in Chengdu, the capital city of Sichuan Province. In this special five-part series, we'll embark on an epic journey, driving more than 3,000 kilometers across. The Sichuan and Yunnan provinces, all the while combating altitude sickness to finally reach China's Shangri La area. We'll explore the Yading Nature Reserve, said to be the source of inspiration for legendary Shangri La, and enter Yunnan province to see the impeccably white snow clad peaks of the Meili mountain range. This trip won't be easy, but I absolutely can't wait to get started. So let's go! On this incredible adventure, we'll journey through the seasons, climbing over mountains high and valleys low. We'll encounter wind, sun, rain and snow as we make our way towards Shangri-La. But before all of that, our first destination is an interesting little Sichuanese town. So we've just arrived in Ya'an, which is around a one and a half hour drive from Chengdu, and also the first stop on our journey. If you look around these kind of peaceful surroundings here, you might find that life in Ya'an flows just a little slower than in other places. People come here to sample fine teas, see giant pandas, and also visit the ancient towns close by. But whichever it is you decide to choose, always remember to bring an umbrella because Ya'an's other name is the City of Rain. With a subtropical climate, Ya'an rains for almost 200 days a year. Don't let that put you off though, as the rain is said to have a rejuvenating effect, which is perhaps why Ya'an is famed for its beautiful women. However, Ya'an's not just known for its ladies. It's both a vital gateway into the Tibet Autonomous Region and was of great importance on the Old Tian Horse Trail. But before I set off to explore Ya'an, I first need to make a quick pit stop at my very unique hotel. Hey, Oh wow, this is really cool. All of these decorations, they're all made of tea. And you can't smell it, but there's a really nice scent of tea in the air. And this... Oh wow, it's really, really fragrant here. And I can really imagine having sweet dreams in this room with the fragrance of tea in the air. The tea culture is so important to Yan. And whether you go out to eat, drink or just sleep at night, it permeates through everything. For many Chinese, tea is so much more than just a drink. It's an entire lifestyle of its own, and you'll often find it used for decoration, as an ingredient in food, or even stuffed inside scented pillows that help you sleep. Tea has a rich history, and it's said that around 53 BC, the first tea plantation in the world was set up on Mengding Mountain here in Ya'an. And the best way to get a taste of that history is to sample Mengding's famous brew. It's really smooth. There's no real aftertaste. It's a bit sweet, but it, it's really gentle and it's quite reminiscent of the Ya'an kind of lifestyle and the atmosphere here as well. Cheers. Ya'an is a perfect example of laid back living. The people of Sichuan love to enjoy life and you'll often find groups of Tai Chi enthusiasts out by the river in the morning. I was invited to join in, and although I could hear my old bones creaking, it was great to sample a part of local life. 
For Sichuan people, to love life is to love food, and Ya'an's morning markets are a buzz with locals out for their daily dose of fresh produce. Sichuan people may be easy going, but their women are without a doubt hard working. Wow! Would you look at that? She's really, really, really fast at、uh, skinning the lotus root. And honestly speaking, if this was me, it'd take me around 15 minutes to do. As fun as the market was, I wanted to check out a product that's been traded for over a thousand years. Everyone's here early in the morning to buy and sell tea, and、uh, actually we've come a bit late. It's around nine o'clock, and they've started to pack up now, so we better hurry up. But all of this, all of this is Ya'an tea, is freshly picked every day. There are a number of markets in Ya'an where you can barter for fresh and processed tea, and it remains an important part of life for many locals to this day. 大姐，这个这个这多少钱？这个这多少钱啊？这个一般一般一斤几块钱 ？So usually around seven RMB for for half a kilo. So that this this how much? This 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 this
Beefon Gorge is a pretty big place and you need at least a full day to get the most out of it. Although we drove here, you can just as easily catch a direct bus from Ya'an's tourist bus station. A ticket covering entry to the zoo, gorge and panda sanctuary will set you back around 200 RMB and the reserve is open from 8 in the morning to 7 in the evening. So this is the proper entrance to the Beefum Gorge and as you can see I need to take the stairway through the clouds. Let's go. The gorge itself is composed of two smaller gorges in a V-shaped pattern with the left branch at 7 kilometers long and the right one slightly shorter at 6 kilometers. So people come to Beefum Gorge to see this kind of beautiful scenery and the many waterfalls inside and you can take one of two routes to take a, a hike around this valley. If you take the right route it takes roughly an hour but I'm going to go for the left one which takes four hours because I'm feeling pretty energetic today. Let's go. This place is perfect for forest exploration and orienteering and for those of you more partial to risk taking Bungee jumping and rock climbing are also common activities here. So for those of you who are quite tall, you might want to watch your head when you walk along this path. And it's also quite slippery below as well, so watch your step. Don't just marvel at this gorgeous scenery. This is the Thousand Stage Waterfall and it's pretty spectacular now but I've been told that if you come here during summer water will cover this entire wall and all you'll hear is the roar of gushing water. It's pretty easy to guess how the Thousand Stage Waterfall got its name and there are a number of other cascades within the scenic area also worth visiting. Beefung Gorge's best features are its falling waters and lush forests and walking along the trails you might just find yourself very quickly losing track of time. So I've got my camera at the ready, we're inside Beefung Gorge, uh, the, the nature reserve inside and we're off to see the carnivorous animals. I, we've got this van here that have uh, little holes for you to put food through so hopefully this is going to protect us uh, <laughs> it feels like a prison but I think we're going to be safe inside just don't put your hand through this hole remember that remember <laughs> Do you know, we've not had lunch yet, so uh, this is looking very tasty to me. Oh, oh, no, 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 we'll save it for the lions just now. <laughs> Come on. You've got longer tongue than that. Oh, that was incredible. You guys have to do this when you come here. It was exhilarating to feed the tigers and moon bears and sitting there in the car, you're so close to them that you'll even feel the mud from their paws getting spattered onto your face. Just remember not to wave their food around and agitate them as they can push your van over and try to get more than just a snap on a skewer. Gruesome endings aside, the next part of the zoo gives visitors the best opportunity to get up close and personal with its animals. So we've arrived at the bird's garden of Beef and Gorge. Let's go inside. Essentially a huge aviary enclosed by a mesh ceiling. It's a paradise for bird lovers and a great place for people of all ages to come. While I'm no expert, my limited knowledge of avian kind tells me there were cranes, cormorants, pelicans, 
herons and swans, to name but a few. If you look at his eyes, he's got really clear black eyes and then this kind of red crest on top. It's, it's really beautiful. There we go. Feeding the birds is a great way to interact with them. And best of all, I've got to do it without the nagging fear of losing a finger to ferocious carnivores. So this might look like it's for babies, but uh, actually it's not. It's fish feed, and for around 5 RMB or so, you can feed it to them through this bottle, which... <laughs> yeah, pr probably not for humans. It's a bit like feeding a baby, except slightly more vicious. I, uh, <laughs> I'm not a father, but it's, it's giving you preparation for later in life. There you have it, there you have it. He's, uh, he's looking just like a panda, like lazily walking about. Okay, maybe I did get a bit overexcited, but this is one of the best places to see pandas in China. Ya'an's climate and its abundant bamboo forests make for a perfect panda habitat. In fact, the giant panda was actually discovered in Ya'an almost 140 years ago by a French missionary named Armand David. With over 150 giant pandas, including those moved from Wolong, Bifeng Gorge has one of the largest numbers of pandas in captivity in the world. There's even a research institute here to study breeding, and if you're lucky, you might just get to see newborn pandas. I've been told that these pandas are around uh, one or two months old, and it's it's hard to imagine that they're this size now, but they used to be around just the length of my index finger when they were first born. And then they grow into the huge pandas we saw earlier. That's, that's some pretty fast growth. Having had a long and eventful day at Bifong Gorge, it was about time for us to finally head back into town. So over the past few days, we've come to realise why Ya'an's called the Rainy City, and also seen some of the lovely ladies Ya'an's famous for. But there's one more thing we mustn't miss before we leave, and that's to try Ya'an's specialty dish, it's fish. Let's go eat. This particular kind of fish can only be found in the Zhougong River, a branch of the Qingyi River that flows through Ya'an. With its tender and delicate meat, this is Ya'an's signature dish, and mine is coming to me in the form of a fish stew. Ah, oh, that smells good. This this is the symbol of Ya'an fish. It really does look like a saw, doesn't it? But uh, I'm too hungry, so I'm going to have to dig in. Cheers, guys. Oh, that is good stuff. Legend has it that the Chinese creation goddess Nuwa accidentally dropped her sword into the river below as she repaired the heavens. Ya'an fish were born from this, 
and as proof, have a perfectly formed blade and sword hilt in their heads. Would you look at that? That's my special little present from this restaurant. So we've got the Ya'an rain pouring outside and we're now on our way to Shangli ancient town which is around a 40 minute drive from Ya'an and uh, was an important hub on the old tea and horse trail. Shangli was also the favourite resting spot for people on the southern silk roads and the traditional Sichuan architecture here has been lovingly preserved. People come to Shangli to admire the Ming and Qing dynasty houses that line its streets and to walk along its beautiful old stone bridges. Everywhere you go, you'll bump into art students and photographers trying to capture the essence of Shangli. Locals also come here to relax and socialise over a pot of tea by the riverside. There's a whole plethora of traditional houses turned hostels here that offer guests a taste of what life was like back in the days. And we're going to check out one of the biggest of these old establishments. Shanli had five powerful families and the Han family were the wealthiest. This was their home built during the Qing dynasty around 300 years ago and it has nine courtyards. Even until today there are around 100 people living here, 22 families all of whom are descendants of the Han family. It's hard to imagine that this family has been here for so long and the fact that they've managed to keep up this tradition of everyone living under the same roof. What's more, they go about their daily life completely undisturbed by the throngs of tourists outside. Mind your step now. This huge doorstep, this huge door frame actually represented the level that the Han family had achieved in the imperial court and also served to deter ordinary folk from coming in. Uh, this is, this might just look like an average stone, but this used to be used as a weightlifting tool back in the days and <laughs> this is 90 kilograms, but they would lift it up and then turn it horizontal and use it to practice. It's, uh, it's a bit too heavy for my old back. Oh. <clears throat> oh, this is more my level. Many of the Han family's descendants were excellent martial artists and when one of the descendants obtained the number one spot in the national martial arts exam, most of Sichuan's officials came together and awarded him this huge plaque you see up there, which is around 200 years old. After a good workout at the Han abode, I find myself back on the streets of Shangli and in search of something to satisfy my hunger. I found a uh, local specialty, it's dry smoked ham and it's hard to the touch and it looks a bit scary but actually it's, it's meant to be very nice. What they do is they put this above a charcoal fire and they smoke it for maybe, I think this one's probably two months or so, even up to a year and uh, what you can do is dice it and chop it into pieces and stir fry it, it's meant to be very nice and giant pandas are meant to really like this as well. Here in Shangli, you can't not pass by the rows of aunties and their steaming pots without wondering what's inside. There's a huge variety of local delicacies on offer here, and I highly recommend giving them all a try. Oh, this is beautiful. You've got this quaint little bridge with grasses draped over it and the misty mountains in the background. For me, Shangli has turned out to be quite a gem. If you come here, why not stay a while?
and like you would with tea, savour its aroma, let it sink in, and have a taste of what life in Shangli is really like. Perhaps it's the fresh air or the relaxed pace of life here in Ya'an, but I've only been here for a couple of days and I feel refreshed already. It really is a shame that we have to leave this place because I would love to stay a bit longer and sample this Ya'an lifestyle. But we still have a very long way to go before we reach Shangri-La. I'm Tiran and I'll see you on the next episode of Travelogue.